pretty broad bottle out. It wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't surprise me. Drop on. Probably not appropriate though, is it? That's no. no. <coughs> oh, hello. <coughs> Hello, one, two, yeah, three, four. We're going live? Okay. Good evening, folks out there, uh, wherever you are. Good evening here in Byron Bay, Byron Shire, and wherever you happen to be watching in the world, of course, the time that it is for you. The amazing thing about time. It's great for you to join us here, and before we begin, I just want to. Uh, to a recognition of country, the country that we live on here, the, uh, the Bundjalung Nation and the Arakal people of this particular region here, and the elders past, present and emerging of that nation on this beautiful country that we find ourselves on. And in fact, we're right on the very most eastern point of Australia here, on the bluff, on the point of Cape Byron, and the lighthouse, as you can see right behind here. Pretty amazing place. And for those who've been here, including our friends there in Belgium, Belgium, uh, you, many of you, of course, have been here. And around the world, people are pretty familiar with this place. But interestingly, that we are right on the, on the very bow of the ship of Australia here. Kind of appropriate. And we're here, of course, tonight to acknowledge the one-year anniversary of the disappearance of Theo Hayes here on May 31st last year, 2019. And uh, somewhere in this region, uh, Theo vanished, or whatever happened to Theo. We still don't know, that mystery is still unsolved. But what we do have here is an, an enormous collection of the incredible community of this Shire who put together, helped, uh, administered to, looked after the family, the friends, the, the situation that we found ourselves in our community here with Theo appearing on that night one year ago. Pretty amazing story. And, we're going to be talking this evening to a, a number of those folks involved in what happened here since that night, and still going on, and still going on. And the incredible engagement of the community with trying to find Theo, find out what happened, and to help the family, as I said. So many of those people are here. We'll be talking to them in some pre-recorded interviews with some of those people. And in fact, we have a lot of those folks over here in the dark. A bit of a noise over there. Say hello. Yo, yo. 
Um, we love you, Belgium. Yes, indeed. And I don't know all these people over here hardly at all. My name's Nick Jeans. Uh, I the radio station here, Bay Radio Station. Um, and I was asked to do this at the last minute, which is great because uh, I was involved last year on radio in interviewing some of these folks about what was going on here in the search for Theo. So we'll be talking to some folks there. We've got this amazing projection up on the lighthouse here behind us. We've got some beautiful light. And uh, there's also a drone up there somewhere. That's the moon, but there is a drone up there. And there will be footage that will be edited in, in a day or so. And uh, there will be an edited version of what is happening here tonight for you to view. Everybody else that you can out there. And uh, let's begin. So we're going to start the pre-recorded interview with Theo's cousin. In fact, Dan, that she was in Brisbane at the time of Theo's disappearance a year ago. And in a way, that was why everybody down here got involved, uh, because they came in contact with Lisa. So let's have a little listen to Lisa Hayes. Theo, to be honest, I don't know where to start. We all miss you so much. You're the kind of person who brings so much happiness to everyone who meets you. Always smiling, laughing, caring about everything and everyone around you. You cannot imagine how much I miss your laugh. It's so communicative. Every time I was seeing you, I couldn't stop laughing because you were naturally making me so happy. You and me have been together since we were born. You've always been like a brother to me. If I had to describe you in a few words, I would say happiness, respect, and love. And once again, you proved it. Since the 31st of May, Bar and Bay changed. People who didn't know each other before reunited with the same goal, finding you. They never stopped, not a second, and trust me, they're not ready to stop until we know what happened to you. They were all strangers for each other, and it looks like you handpicked each of them to create the best, the strongest, and the most amazing team to try to find you. Because you have that power, the power to, re to reunite the best people around you. And when you look at them, talking, smiling, sending so much love to each other, I just know that it's you bringing them together. I want to thank them so much for doing all these things they do for you. I am the one talking today, but trust me, I'm talking from all our family back in Belgium. It's really hard for me to find the words today, but with you, we never needed lots of words to express our feelings. We just knew. Thank you, Theo. Thank you so much for being such a great guy, a great son, a great brother. You deserve all the respect in the world. And I promise you that we're never gonna give up, never. We're such a great team here, and I really wish you could meet all of them. I hope so much that wherever you are, you're okay and happy. I love you to the moon and back. Yeah, thanks to Lisa Hayes, beautiful. And it speaks really to exactly that, that family and friends and this community have come together in such an incredible way in this, in this last year or so. I, I do understand and we'll hear from Lauren O'Keefe from uh, Missing Persons Advocacy Network, I believe in a little while from a pre-recorded interview and uh, I do understand that she considers what has happened here in this community in Byron Shah, in Byron Bay in particular, quite remarkable in the world of, of this kind of um, tragic event happening. So it goes to, speaks to a lot of uh, the energy of this place, Byron, and those of you who've been here know what we mean by that, if you've been here and been part of that community. So I just want to acknowledge that because I've been here for 30 years myself and while we're a very disparate and often um, kind of at each other with different views about things in this community. On, in the end, when something like this happens, this community comes together in an incredible way. And um, so I just really want to acknowledge the volunteers and, the, and the, the many members of the community who took part and still are taking part, as I said, in the search for Theo. And as I said, many of them are just over here right now. And to the family who's watching in Belgium and from anywhere else in the world, hello to you and welcome and thank you for being here. I have uh, here with me George Healy, my first live guest, and he certainly is a live man indeed, a very uh, fun chap. I've got to know very briefly here, just sitting opposite him in the last uh, little time. Uh, hi, George, how are you doing? Hi, how are you? 
good. George, you uh, did a lot of the coordination for the search back there a year ago or so, and you've actually only been in Australia for three years, been an Irish chef. Yeah. 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 So how did you get involved back then, last well, year? When we first heard about it, um, both Mary, my wife and I looked at each other and thought, we have to help, because both of our children at similar ages in, in their journey also did their backpacking and had their backpacking experience here in Byron yeah. and had nothing but good to say about it. And we thought, we have, we've got to help. And, and there's a family, a Belgian family, in the Northern Hemisphere in dire need of help. It's the worst possible nightmare for a parent. Here we are. What do we do? And we found the group and we just got stuck in. Yeah. How was it to, uh, to go into an unfamiliar territory? I mean, coming from there and you come into this landscape on the, on the coast, the easternmost point of Australia, uh, and you take part in a, in a search for, for this young man. Yeah, well, for both, as I said, both myself and Miriam, we, we wanted to explore Australia. We didn't think that we were going to get to see so much up close and personal yeah. with, the, with the terrain. Um, but we didn't really think about it or the, of the dangers or anything. We just thought, OK, we have to go here today. In we go. Um, you put the thoughts of dangers and, and possibilities of what might be there or not there. Or, you know, you just be careful, step carefully and, and keep an eye on left and right and, and just Keep looking. Mm. Now I, I know Rob Rose is over there, and he, he didn't want to come and talk directly about. Oh, Rob is terribly shy. Yeah, the terrain and so <laughs> forth. Uh, but maybe you can speak a bit to it because I do understand. And having been here a long time, I didn't actually know how incredibly thick and difficult the terrain down there where Theo is supposed to have yeah. last been yeah. uh, uh, shown to have been. Yeah, it's it's very deceptive actually because when you're standing up here mm. looking across the landscape and you think, yeah, gosh, exactly. it looks gorgeous. It's akin to when you're flying in an aircraft you think you could just step out on that cotton wool you know and you think <laughs> the bushland looks lovely and it's it's delicate and innocent looking until you actually step into it and you go past the threshold of from beach through into that wall of bush yes um for the first little bit it's okay you can get around the bushes and everything else and it just gets denser and denser and next thing you're climbing over and under and around and making sure the person beside you is safe and some of it was swampland, some of it is dense, dense grasses and ferns and very, very steep terrain as well. Yes. You know, and some of it is just, oh, we're going up there today, okay. Mm. <laughs> what about the ocean? Because, of course, we're right on the, on the edge of the ocean, yeah. the Pacific Ocean. Um, there was a lot of, um, in the earlier stages, a, a lot of abseilers did their thing yes. on, on the dangerous areas. Yes. We went where we could. Um, some of us took chances that maybe we shouldn't have taken, okay. but we did anyway, um, out around at... at um, over at Lennox, uh, Suffolk and, and yes. Broken Heads and that. Broken Some head. of us went around on the cliff edges and, and, oh. and on the rocky areas there and quite spooky, mm. dangerous rocks, you know. But we just went there. Yeah. You know. So obviously you worked with police and you worked with uh, rescue organisation, but you also really create a community, an own community sort of unit to, to, <coughs> to work with that and assist and do... Well, we were there to do the bidding of whoever needed us. Yeah initially you know and, and, and if the police needed us to go to a certain area we did um, and then as it evolved um, and the police had to do their thing and they had their restrictions and constraints um, protocol or whatever else um, if the family needed us, wanted us to go somewhere we're here that's what we're for you know and we, we had a bit more freedom I suppose than the police because we weren't restrained yes. constrained by protocols and if they wanted to go up a cliff if we were willing to go we went mm -hmm. You know, and if they needed a place to be searched, in we went, and we went through it. And if we wanted us to go back again, we went back again. What was the most the thing that most surprised you about the whole venture up to this point, coming in like you did being um, here for just that little time, and suddenly finding yourself in the middle of this? Well, to see such an outpouring of willingness to support yeah. from such a diverse group of people, and then. The local support for the group while we're searching, I mean, the donations of food and the donations of equipment and the businesses willing to help out. And every local that you met, wherever you were going, oh, we're walking on the beach and we're aware of it, which meant there's other eyes open for the search in whatever avenue, whether it was right. down Tiagara or whether it was up in, in you know. And it, it was just fantastic to see such an awareness and an outpouring and also so much shock with people that, oh, you know, this is in our neighborhood and how could it have happened? And, you know, it was just to see the, the, the affection from the people and the caring, the genuine caring. You know. And what's next for you with this? 
Well, you obviously still well, engage with it, aren't you? Oh, we're going to stay yeah, engaged. Just thank you and if the family wants something done, we're here to do it. Yeah. You know, uh, no sont ici. I hope that's correct. <laughs> but we're here, yeah. yeah. Um, there's a few that are really, really involved in, in an investigation side of it. Mm -hmm. And they're not letting go, like Lisa said. We're not going to let go. We've got to get answers. Got to have an answer. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. I mean, it's the least the family deserve. I mean, their, their, their whole lives have been ruptured. So beautiful. We do our best. Thanks, thanks, George. George Healy. Thank you. And uh, and all the best for the we'll future keep for all of us. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks for talking to okay. us. Okay. Um, we're going to have a uh, I look now to another pre-recorded video with Lauren O'Keefe, who is a missing persons advocacy network uh, person who was uh, involved with this case. She has been trained, or the organisation is trained, to help deal with ambiguous loss ambiguous loss, exactly what we have here. Is it this, is it that, what actually it is? And that website for those who are interested is mpan.com.au, mpan.com.au. This is Lauren O'Keefe. So um... Come back with Renee actually, and then go to Lauren a little bit later. Thank you. And uh, thanks for joining us on this Facebook social media live telecast from the Lighthouse for this one year anniversary of the disappearance of the beautiful young man, Theo Hayes, who has the mystery of which is still unsolved. And we're here with many members of the community behind us 
uh, and around us and with us uh, who've been involved in the, the whole venture. I wouldn't say adventure, but the venture of trying mm -hmm. to find this young man and solve the mystery. And hello again to the family watching in from Belgium mm -hmm. and people from anywhere else in the world. And I have with me Renee Scott. Hi, hey, Renee. Hello. Renee, who uh, essentially was the, uh, the coordinator of the search. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, well, first of all, you're going to you're going to do some thank yous, aren't you? Because there's a lot of people to thank yeah. and um, you know them all and you know them all well. And just before you do that though, you have a bit of a personal story about why, in it, you told, told me before, if you're yeah. willing to do so, about why you did get involved in this yourself and your sister, your twin sister. Yeah. Okay. Jacqueline, who's over there. <laughs> we yeah. grew up in a very small town and that was called Kenilworth on the Sunshine Coast. 300 and people, I think you told me. Yeah, I think the sign Small on the way town. in says 320 or something. It used to, there's more now. But um, yeah, one of our teachers went missing and she was a really well-loved okay. lady. Um, her son was in our composite class and friend. I don't know why, obviously those things do stay with you and I don't know why we mm. actually got involved, but you know, definitely comes to mind but yeah. also so does the community spirit to help one yeah. another out and seeing that initial footage of Lisa door knocking yeah just wanted well to I remember having you on Bay FM radio last year yeah uh, the two of you Lisa and yourself uh, Sherry Sherry yeah. sorry yeah. I get all the names mixed up that's okay Pardon me. sorry <laughs> sorry Sherry uh, and talk and talking about this that was really just at the beginning of the whole yeah. situation so thank you so many people to thank Go right ahead, please. Well, a massive, massive thank you to Sean and Dan at North Coast Events. This is somewhat <laughs> short notice and all of our wild ideas thrown at them at short notice, they have just done an amazing job. And also a big thank you to Noli at Byron Films. He's capturing all the photography and the film work tonight. He'll be creating a little video for tomorrow to shareable clip. Including the drone footage, which apparently is... Yeah. I thought that was the moon, but it's the drone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you'll be able to... Everyone at home will be able to share that clip and help spread the word. Keep an eye out for that tomorrow. Yeah. Mm. And what else, who else can we thank? There's many people to thank, isn't there? Yourself. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nick Jeans here is the president of our favourite Byron radio station, Bay FM. And a, like a very familiar face for everyone living here. Um, and just a big thank you to every volunteer that turned up. Yeah. From many people here and many so many people here, here all doing a great job at social distancing. Thank you. <laughs> And yeah, we have oceanographers, cartographers. Elise couldn't be here, but we have just Malia, the oceanographer. I've yeah. got some of these names. Dan Halpin, the cybersecurity man. Dan Halpin, yeah. Oh, so can we uh, just briefly? Why did you have, have to have a cyber? Why did you need to have a cybersecurity person on this? To, I mean, it's kind of obvious. But can you explain that a bit? It's he pretty interesting. offered his support to the private detective, and they yeah. they've worked in the past together, so, okay. yeah. Yep. Fantastic. The future, because as George Healy said a, a few minutes ago, uh, you're still working on this, you're still looking for the answer. So mm. what's next and what can people do out there to help with that? So locally, it's really important that everyone recognises and understands what clothing he had, in particular his shoes. Um, he had a black hoodie with a white image on the front, mm. some tan pants, black watch. You know, those things familiar, those posters are on every beach exit in Byron Bay. Yes. Familiarise yourself with those and they're all online as well. Um, and internationally, the next step is to engage the international audience with his disappearance because ultimately we're trying to find someone that may have been with him that night and someone that may know something and it's such a transient town that we feel that maybe that person may have traveled on and yeah, yeah. so to share the online clip tomorrow to share the online clip yeah. yes and that can be found on looking for theo hayes looking for Facebook theo hayes page. yeah it's t h e o h a y e s yeah, yeah. fantastic yeah. 
Um, and lastly, Renee, mm. if you were to say something to the family who are yeah. watching right now, because you know many of them very well, yes. or the ones who, who came out here. Yeah. yeah. They're so beautiful, yes. all of them. They, yeah, just big hug and, yeah, we think about them and send our love to them all the time. Yeah, they're in our thoughts daily. Yeah. And you just, they have our support whenever they need it. Yeah. Mm. Thank you. Yeah. Great. Mm. Renee Thank Scott. You. I think we're going to go now to the clip with Lauren O'Keefe from mm. the Missing Persons Advocacy Network, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah? Mm. Hi, everyone. My name is Lauren O'Keefe. I started in the Missing Persons Advocacy Network after my younger brother passed away. MPAN is a small charity here in Australia that creates awareness for missing people and provides support to their families. Hi everyone, my name is Lauren O'Keefe. I started MPAN Missing Persons Advocacy Network after my younger brother disappeared. MPAN is a small charity here in Australia that creates awareness for missing people and provides support to their families and friends. We do that by humanising missing loved ones beyond their vital stats, engaging the public and the media through creative projects and reframing this as the community issue it is. To Theo's family and friends, I am so sorry that he is still missing. You never think in those first days and weeks that it could ever possibly get to this point. And the closer that markers like these get, the more you dread them passing. So this is a particularly brutal time for everyone who knows and loves Theo, and my heart is with you all. In the last nine or so years that I've been working in this space, I have never seen a more extraordinary demonstration of community spirit than what I've seen in Byron Bay for Theo. You should all feel extremely proud of the way that you have embraced this difficult, exhausting journey. You are the best example of what every family living this nightmare deserves to have. So thank you. This one year marker serves as continue to search for Theo and support his loved ones as they continue to navigate the torment of ambiguous loss. Finding Theo is as urgent today as it was this time last year. So please keep up the amazing efforts. You have no idea how much it means to his family and friends. I understand how difficult it is to maintain energy levels when there is no end date, but please keep looking for Theo. And thank you. That was, as I said, Lauren O'Keefe from the Missing Persons Advocacy Network, mpan.com.au. And you want to make a couple of uh, additional things about comments about that, Renee? Yeah, one is just the importance of the community search and how dense that bushland is and another 10 people that turn up. It just is so important and yeah, I just wanted to encourage everyone to get involved in searches, if, especially if, if and when they happen again for Theo and just if it ever happens in your community to, to get you know, be involved. Yeah. Well, that's important too mm. because these kind of incidents are unfortunately, uh, arguably more common these days, one way or the other around the world. So mm. to see a community come together in the way that it has here in this yeah. shire is exemplary, really. And, you know, we feel very grateful and very proud, I guess, mm. of our community here and to all those people. Yeah, so thank yeah. you. And I'd just like to say if anyone especially in the local community wants to help, they can always reach out via the, um, all the links to, all the contact links are on the Looking for Theo Hayes Facebook page. Looking for Theo page. Hayes Facebook yeah. page, great. Yeah. 
Okay, mm. thanks Renee. Thank we'll you. take a short break or we we'll do a bit of a change and we'll be back. And stay mm -hmm. tuned and hello Europe in lockdown, yeah. coming out slowly. Hopefully you're doing well out there, all of you. Thanks for being with us. Hi there, we are uh, back. Well, we haven't gone anywhere, actually. You never, you never say on, on radio that you're back because you haven't really actually gone anywhere. But we're on, the, on television now. We're broadcasting live here visually from the lighthouse in Byron Bay, the easternmost point in Australia on this chilly near winter, well, it's pretty well winter evening in uh, this country. And over there in Belgium, I guess it's about nine hours or so uh, earlier than this. So you're somewhere in the middle of the day right now. Uh, mid-morning, I guess. I can't even do the calculation. I have you here with me our next guest, uh, and her name is Nicolette. I don't know your last name, Nicolette. Revis. Nicolette Revis. Yeah. There you go. That's a good name. <laughs> that's, got, that's a sort of creative kind of name. Now, you are one of the people who, well, what, you're, what you end up doing, and we'll find out how you did that, is you organised a family, uh, Theo's family who came out here. You organised accommodation. That was quite an event in itself, wasn't it? Quite a, a generous... Uh, a project from the community too that you put in yeah, place. Yeah. Can yeah. you give us a bit of a sketch about how that happened? Um, I, I think if we were to go back to day one, mm -hmm. I helped the search, the initial search, and I met Lisa and Michael, um, and I realised that here were these kids that... I shouldn't say kids, should I? No. no. <laughs> well, you can. <laughs> We're all kids. We're all kids. <laughs> that had the weight of the world on their shoulders. Yeah. So I, and they were driving back and forth from Brisbane, Brisbane. to Byron every yes. day. And so every day. Which you I, can't do right now. No. Mm. 
but I would check in and say, do you guys need a place to stay? Do you need any sandwiches for lunch? And that's how it initially okay. started, that I was looking after, well, not looking after them, I was just checking in to make sure they were okay. And then when the family started to arrive, I decided that, you know, I needed to organise accommodation for them um, and fill their fridge with food because I'm a good Greek girl <laughs> and it's all about the food. Pineapples, apples, you know, it was, it was amazing. Yeah, amazing from the community that all came together and donated, donated, yeah. 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 yeah, and offers of all sorts of things, including accommodations and as a time went on, accommodation, cars, cars, massage, massage yeah. you know, like yeah. everything. So, were you surprised by that outpouring? You know, to be Even honest, here? yeah, I think it was such an intense time that I didn't have a chance to be surprised by it. You know, mm. it was. I mean, I was really, in many ways, in the thick of it with the family and so my focus was really just about um, making sure that they were okay. Mm. So I didn't have time, in hindsight, yeah, it was incredible what everybody did. I mean, I had people dropping lunch to me every day that I would take over to the family, dropping dinner every night and so I was just sort of this thing in the background. But you, you feeding became, and caring and but you became very close to the family though yeah you, and yeah. because of that because you know i was there with them every day um and night that we became very close and i, I consider them like my family now mm. so yeah you you've got them watching you right now anything <laughs> you'd like to say right oh, now don't because i'll uh, start crying it's okay. <laughs> um you said you could you could lighten up before. I know. I was like, <laughs> some of them joke. So a little bit of lightness was actually okay. I think. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and they know me. You know, like yeah, I course. can't be serious all the time. It's just not. You know, it's not who I am. So, yeah. you know, and that was an amazing time. We shared a lot of tears, but we also shared some really beautiful moments, really special moments mm. together. And you know, we shared a little bit of laughter here and there, and. Um, yeah, I'm, I miss you guys. I really miss you and I just wish Belgium wasn't so far away and um, I wish that even if I could fly, that if they would allow smoking on aeroplanes, <laughs> I would totally be in Belgium, I promise you. But um, anyway, I, um, I love you and I'm, I miss you. Yeah. And I'm sorry, you know, I'm sorry we haven't found your boy. Last thing, uh, Nicoletta, uh, a little bit about the podcast, because you yes. also created the podcast, uh, I think, with David Murray. Can you yes. tell us a little bit about so that? So I, early on when the police um, stopped their search, for mm. me that was probably one of the most, the hardest um, times to be with the family. That was just a very definite shift, you know, mm, and... Um, in my mind, I thought that a podcast might be a really good way forward just to get the story out to as many people as possible, you know, using just one form of media rather than, you know, so much media, yeah. which is quite invasive and obtrusive, you know, so I yes, thought just one to do that. And so I slowly explained to the family what it was about and, you know, um, I ended up emailing the Australian newspaper and contacting David Murray and, you know, of course there was a whole process that needed to go on where I needed to get um, the family's blessing, of course, because, you know, it's a big thing and they were amazing and... Oh. You're the drone. <laughs> the drone. You're being shot from by the drone. It's my best angle. Uh, there yeah. you go. <laughs> I don't think it's mine. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so we got that, that happening and David Murray was amazing yeah. and I think, you know, he did a pretty incredible job and last count they had two million downloads. Uh, it's a great way just to get the awareness of Theo's disappearance yes. out there because, you know, the more people that hear, hopefully something is going to come forward. Well, as David Healy said to me before we started earlier this evening, he said, somebody out there knows something. Somebody knows something, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. 
Yeah, yeah. I really find I really I really hope that if that somebody is able is is watching that you know they're able to find it in their hearts to come forward and know that it's okay. You know, things happen, and the truth we can deal with the truth. You know, it's the not knowing that is mm. absolute agony in yes, this. Absolutely. You know, and if it's agony for me, for Vassien and Lucas and, and you know, Laurent, it's, it's absolute agony and, and, and please, you know, please come forward. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Nicoletta. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, folks, we're going to uh, very shortly, once we're set up in a few minutes, we're going to have a little bit more music and some more images. And then we're going to move, I'm going to take you up to the lighthouse there where you see behind me, uh, and to the installation on the on the on some of the walls of the lighthouse, what, we, what we've been able to do, the video projections. And just before we start that, I'll just, well, actually, I'll acknowledge it when we come back, when we get set up, that's probably the best way to do it. So stay with us. We'll be back very shortly. Thanks, Nicoletta. Yeah.
Hi there. We're here at the Lighthouse on this May the 31st, 2020, one year to the day since the disappearance, the mysterious disappearance of Theo Hayes here. And uh, we've been talking to many of the volunteers and people who've been involved at that time and still through this time and forward into the future. And just to reiterate that if you ever have any, find any, know of any, or come across any information that may assist the, uh, the solving, the answers, finding the answers to the disappearance of Theo, then please uh, contact uh, either the new website, the best way is the new website, which is uh, looking for Theo4 as a number. So looking, the number four, Theo.com, looking for Theo.com, that's a new website, or also looking for Theo, the Facebook page as we talked about before, and also just to, to mention again the Missing Persons Advocacy Net, Network, mpan.com.au. Um, I also have been asked to uh, acknowledge the online community who've been fabulous through this time as well. So hello to you all out there who have engaged with this, uh, this process through this year, this journey, um, and still. And I've also been particularly asked to say hello to the psychologist in Belgium, Cecile Joris, uh, who's been fantastic apparently in this whole process too. So thank you to her. Now we're going to get up in a moment, I'm going to take you up to the lighthouse where we're going to see, as I said, some video projections on the lighthouse of a poem written by Debbie Milgate, who's a local here for many, many years, I understand. There's also a photo uh, from an artist, uh, Rodolphe Van Loo, uh, and um, the video work, video projection work has been created by Dashboard Animals, and thanks to Ariana, Charlie, and Miro, or Miro for that. Miro, Miro. Um, so let's go. I think that's about it. And as I said, remember that keep your eyes out. Keep your senses aware. Listen, see, observe. Uh, and we will find an answer. Let's go and have a look up here. Follow me. First, we're going to go and have a look over here at um, these wonderful people, again, who are some of the volunteers. I can't see the ground. Um, you can see them? Yeah. Come over here. Have a bit of a wave and a hello, a bit of a noise, just gentle. Yeah, we love you, Belgium. Beautiful. So let's all get up. We're going to walk the steps to the James. Thank you.
world Feel the chill Which way to go Windows I see the words On a rocking horse of time And I see the birds and the rainbows Oh dear dad Can you see me now oh, I am myself like you somehow I'll ride the wave where it takes me Oh dear dad can you see me now oh, I am Myself, like you, somehow wait up in the dark for you to speak to me. It's wonderful to have um, a community come together. It's um, tragic that it takes circumstances like this often in the world to bring us all close. Um, I was incredibly touched by uh, Theo's story. And uh, I feel for his family. I've had deep loss in my own life, so um, I can share that pain, <laughs> I guess. The song's called Angel from Montgomery. Maybe there's a bit of hope. I am an old woman Named after my mother My old man is another My child is grown old Your dreams are thunder Lightning was desire old house with a burnt down a long time ago make me an angel that flies from Montgomery make me just give me one thing that I can hold on to to believe living the hard way to go When I was a young boy I fell in love deeply But no matter how I tried The years seemed to fly Make me an angel it flies from Montgomery Make me a poster Of an old rodeo Just give me one thing That I can hold on to To believe in this living To believe in this living It's just a hard way to go Flies in the kitchen 
I can hear him buzzing And I ain't done nothing Since I woke up today How the hell can a person Go to work in the morning Come home in the evening And I have nothing to say Make me an angel That flies from a gun Make me a poster an old rodeo Just give me one thing that I can hold on to To believe in this living To believe in this living This is a heart Can we have a big clap for Theo and for all the people that love him and thanks Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, folks. Thank you.